Hi, I'm Tony Poulos and I'm at the DSP Leaders World Forum in Windsor. This is the next version of the Extra Shot and I can tell you we've had a lot of extra shots of coffee as well. So we'll be very lively in this last session for the day. I have with me today Robert Curran, who is the Consulting Analyst at Apple Door Research. Welcome again, Robert. Mark Gilmore, Chief Technology Officer at Connectivity. Very well done. I have a very hard one to get out at this late stage of the day. <laughs> and of course, Justin Paul, who is the Marketing Director of Open Gateway at GSMA. Justin, good to catch up again. We were talking about APIs at length in a previous session the two of you were on. And one of the things that uh, came up in my head was, why has it taken so long for the potential of APIs to be recognized? Robert, I'd like you to kick off with that. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I, I think we, we had a few different goes at the network API things over the course of you know, telecoms history. But there's a confluence of technologies and capabilities becoming available. I think it's a combination of reasons. Uh, partly, obviously, the cloud is incredibly important and now incredibly available. That's on the, on the kind of supply side. On the demand side, you're seeing more interest in companies having an application to application layer of integration with, with telcos. And then on top of that, then you've got the development of networks themselves and, and programmable networks. So now you've got a mix of different things in play that mean, okay, we can do something really interesting and really different with that. I, I know when Justin will probably talk more about some of the uh, cooperation required and enabling, but, but I'll let him talk about those things. So I think that's, that's the answer. We're getting well, to a point where enough of the pieces are in place to do something really interesting. Well, for Mark, the requirements are slightly different because he's a wholesale operator. What do you think about that question? Uh, so it's, uh, it's been, a, it's been a, 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 a function, I think, of demand uh, coming to it as well. Um, I think we've, operators are now, or the industry is getting to now to a point where actually we have to do it. Um, those things that Robert mentioned are, are now in place. Um, and so it's a, it, it, it has to be done in order to maintain cost base, in order to maintain um, any sort of margin in that. Because it, in, in the part of the industry that I'm working in now, it has been a bit of a race to the, race to the bottom in terms of uh, pricing. Yep. Um, and so it's about economies as, as much as it is then about enabling um, uh, the effective use of uh, of those services and so, and, and, and consume, consuming of those services. Well, Justin, what does uh, API enablement bring? What are the benefits it's going to bring? Operators in particular. I'll get to the net, I'll get to the enterprises later. Yeah. No, I th I, th I think in answer to that and thinking about the previous question, um, it's about big fish in small ponds, and I think that's where telecoms operators have, have traditionally played in the API space. They've been very large, some of them have sort of you know, 40, 50% market share in their own markets. But on the global stage, they're relatively small players. And I think a lot of the times they've developed APIs and some, some of the operators have very sophisticated API-based businesses, but basically the API is to work with their network. So it's very parochial in the approach. And while that can be attractive, particularly for some of the bigger operators, you know, some of the, 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 the silverbacks in the, uh, in the room. Um, for developers, it's not necessarily a big enough addressable market. Mm. And that's this change of mindset with the Kamara initiative and, and to a certain extent the TM Forum initiative. You have a, a standardized set of APIs that mean if you're a developer, you develop something once you take that capability, you can sell it to everyone. So it has a global addressable market. Yep. That becomes a lot more access, uh, a lot more attractive, a lot more accessible, and it makes it easier to make money from APIs. And if you're a global enterprise, you don't want to be having to deal with multiple different APIs across the globe. And exactly. I'm thinking the global API situation is critical. And that came up in the conversation earlier today. Are global APIs feasible? Are we getting there? Ah, I, I'll, I'll tackle that. Um, so in my space, yes, um, and actually, it was a key, it was a key driver of our business plan. We needed to have some sort of global um, standardisation or something to build from. Yep. Um, having come from the mobile mobile environment, you know, and having the cellular world, where actually having that global standardisation has enabled us to have these devices that work anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, put that into the, the market that I'm in now, um, it makes sense. You, it, uh, I mentioned it on the panel. Um, 
telecom is traditionally a regional play. Yes. You made a very good point about it's quite been, been quite parochial. Um, that's easier for you to say than me. Um, <laughs> but, but ultimately, and we heard it particularly in the auto automobile um, or the vehicular yes. session there, they want a global solution. And, and in, order to, in order to deliver a global solution, telcos have to work together, connectivity yep. partners have to work together. And if we can do that using some sort of global set of standards or approaches that make sense for us all, it does actually make, it makes life easier for us all. Yeah, a couple of examples today of how APIs are generating revenues for telcos. How are they doing it? And how is it happening now? And what's going to happen in the future? Are we going to get better at this? <laughs> well, I know it's a tough one. Oh, no, it's Go, for Robert, me. come on, you and jump yeah, in. Yeah. Give these guys a break. They're terrified of that yeah. one. So, look, I think everybody's uh, trying to see what is the revenue opportunity. Yes. All kinds of you know, wild numbers and then very conservative numbers. The reality is let's do something and see how it flies to some degree. There's a number of different pressure points. Uh, from the industry. So there's clearly, as Mark says, and we heard on the panel, there's demand from certain classes of enterprise, certain verticals. We know a lot about kind of fraud, security identity, and so on. There's a requirement there. Yeah. But in terms of generating real money from this, we need to kind of experiment a little bit. And that's into the different areas. There's network capability, there's network data, there's other supplementary information, not to do with network APIs, but to do with APIs more generally. Uh, you think even like simply, simply credit scoring, you know, financial payment history, all that other information yeah. that telcos have, it's not related to network, but is related to things that could be material in terms of detecting fraud and so on. So it's, it's, it's a whole spectrum of opportunities that are all potentially monetizable in, in different ways. Mark? So I don't believe at all that APIs per se will be monetized, but it's the services. Wash your mouth out. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a, I, I, That's sacrilege in an event like this. I, I know it is a little bit because I, I actually believe that it's, that the APIs are a way to consume uh, the services that we, that we sell. There's so, a benefit. And so therefore, um, if we want to expand our reach, expand our, um, that addressable market, then you, you make your services easier to consume. And uh, APIs are a means to be able to do that. So I'm, I don't subscribe to this view that, that, that we'll be selling our, our, the API itself that we've developed, certainly not in the space I am. It may be slightly different in the cellular. Uh, I, I, will, I will take note on that. But, um, but I, do, I, don't, I, I see them more as an enabler to um, to consume the services that we that we create. I mean, from my point of view, I think you know, I have to be very careful. I can't talk prices, but I think we can talk about the models. And of course, anything we do, it you know, there's a commercial reason for doing it, and yes. there are typically three reasons for doing anything. Anything an operator one is reduced operational costs. The second is to improve experience, and the third is to generate new revenue streams. And for a long time, that's been the holy grail. Yes. And I think network APIs give that opportunity. There are a lot of numbers floating around. Yes. And I think there has to be a reality that if you are providing a piece of information from a network that is small and transactional, you will get a small and transactional piece of revenue. If you, and that would be a, selling an API, say location or a SIM swap, SIM swap check, something like that. What you're seeing is moving up the value chain if, if you see multiple APIs being put together, perhaps with operator data or network data, there's more value around that. And then the final stage is if you take that capability and embed it in an application, that's where the big money is because you'll be looking at a share of that revenue. So create a location API, um, that's one thing, turn that into a rideshare app, and that's where you start to get 20, you know, a percentage of the revenue. And some of this is to do with the ambition. Where do you want to be as an operator? Are you down at the transaction layer? Yep. Or are you up at the innovation 
creating new services based on the APIs into your network. Robert's busting to get in. We're running out of time, but go on. <laughs> I just want to say that there's the one thing that combines both of those perspectives, which is the importance of automation. You know, APIs are not just about how you get access to the thing, it's about the whole automation process. You're not going to make money if behind your API is a person who's got to go and do something on a system. So yeah. automation and APIs absolutely kind of flip the, sides of the, the same coin. The swivel chair approach. Uh, listen, you guys, this is where I'm going to disagree. I'm an old billing guy, and when APIs were first mentioned, I'm thinking transaction charge. Every time an API was hit, you know, 0 0.001 cent or something like that. Billing departments would have loved that. You would have got revenue. I don't know what the problem is. Anyway, thanks for being <laughs> with me today and talking about APIs. Because at the moment, it seems to be a very hot topic. Even the, the people are talking about fraud and the requirements mm. of APIs to help prevent this major industry. At fraud. Wow. Figures were mind-boggling. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me. Pleasure. That's our last extra shot for today. For all of you at home, you can have a relaxing afternoon, evening, morning in some cases if you're in Australia. Thank you for being with us. Uh, tomorrow we will be here again. We've got four or five extra shots and we'll be coffeeed up ready for you by then. Thanks for being with us.